Hello, and welcome to my guide for getting started with Path of Exile on the Steam Deck. Whether you just got your Steam Deck or are looking to get one soon and want to get a sense of what it's like to get started with Path of Exile on the Steam Deck, this video will cover all the things you need to know to get set up, get going, and all the little tips and tricks you're going to need in order to really have a good experience with Path of Exile on the Steam Deck. So, first of all, how do you install and play Path of Exile on the Steam Deck? This is really easy. You just go to Steam and you hit install and you start it up and it should work just fine out of the box. Now, if you're already playing on PC and you're using the standalone client instead of the Steam client, my recommendation is that rather than try to get the standalone client working on the Steam Deck, just use the Steam client. Uh, the reason for this is because Steam will actually pre-cache shaders for you when you're using the Steam version of games. And because of this, you get a lot less stutter when you're playing the Steam version of the game. If you're using the standalone client, you can use the Steam client alongside it just fine. You can link your accounts up to your Steam account and you'll have no problems switching between playing the standalone client on your desktop and the Steam client on your Steam Deck. So once you have it installed, just hit play to start it up and we can get into some of the settings you ought to change in order to get the best possible experience on the Steam Deck. So, first things first, very important. You need to go to the graphics settings and you have to change your renderer to Vulkan. If you have it set to anything else, you will have very poor performance and possibly even graphics glitches on the Steam Deck. This is because Linux only has native support for the Vulkan API and DirectX is not quite emulated. It's called a compatibility layer, but it, you can think of it like it's emulating those two. So it's obviously much better to use the API that's natively supported on the Steam Deck, so just set this to Vulkan and don't look back. Past that for graphic settings, I would recommend setting them as low as possible. I have things set to basically the bare minimum they will go. This is because the reality is the Steam Deck screen is very small and the impact of these settings on the visual quality that you can see on a screen of that size is very minimal. However, the performance gains and the battery life savings are very real. So my recommendation is just turn it all down. So that would be V-Sync disabled, anti-aliasing off. For this, just shadows, not, not global illumination. Then low, low, low. Uh, this is not something that affects performance, but I like the bloom low. Uh, depth of field disabled, water detail low. Texture quality, medium is actually the lowest setting. And the lowest setting for texture filtering as well. Trust me when I say it's gonna look just fine on the Steam Deck, even with all this stuff turned down. Uh, then further down, we have dynamic culling, dynamic resolution, target frame rate, which we'll get back to, engine and engine multi-threading. So make sure you have all these set to enabled. The next thing you need to decide is what target frame rate you're going to go for on the Steam Deck. And whatever target frame rate you choose, you need to set this number to. Your two good options are either 40 FPS with the monitor refresh rate set to 40 Hertz, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, or you set it to 30 FPS with a 60 Hertz refresh rate. This slider bar is actually weird and kind of buggy, so I'm just gonna leave it at 40 for now. Uh, if need be, you can get in there with your finger on the touch screen and adjust it. I have tested both of these extensively and I personally find that 40 FPS at 40 Hertz feels much, much better. 30 FPS ends up looking a bit stuttery and you can kind of feel the slight input delay you get there. So I'm gonna recommend 40. Now, the reason you don't wanna just set this to 60 and let it run uncapped is that, first of all, the Steam Deck can't quite hit a, a consistent 60 FPS on the Steam Deck. So you're gonna end up getting somewhere between the 40 and 60 FPS range most of the time and those stutters aren't gonna look good, they're not gonna feel good. Plus, when you're really pushing the Steam Deck to the limit like that, you are making it work at 100% capacity all the time. This is very bad for your battery life, put out a bit of extra heat, and those are things you wanna avoid. So capping your frame rate is a much better strategy and I recommend 40 FPS at 40 Hertz. So when you set this target frame rate to 40 Hertz, the next thing to do after you save these settings is you wanna hit the quick menu access button on the Steam Deck. That's the one in the lower right with the three dots on it. This will bring up this quick settings menu. 
And the most important thing in here is this performance tab. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to turn on the use per game profile setting. What this lets you do is any settings you change here will be just for Path of Exile and they'll switch these settings every time you boot up Path of Exile. This lets you have separate custom settings for each game on your Steam Deck, which is absolutely the way to go. Then you can see right now, it's currently set to 60 FPS at uh, 60 Hertz, which is totally uncapped. This is not what you want. So for the target frame rate of 40 I set up before, I would wanna change this refresh rate slider down to 40. I'm actually not gonna do it right now because it messes up with my capture card recording, so I can't actually set it to 40, but you're gonna to wanna to slide this refresh rate slider down to 40. Or if you want 30 FPS at 60 Hertz, you go up here to frame rate limit and just move this down to 30, which will cause the game to be capped at 30 FPS. Other than that, I would not change any of these settings. They will have a huge, like half rate shading will make the game look terrible and really only have minimal performance impact. Uh, these two settings are much more advanced control. It's not really something I wanna get into and it's really not necessary to have a good experience on the Steam Deck. In addition to the settings in game, there's one setting that you might wanna change generally on the Steam Deck. And this is the fan curve. So by default now, the Steam Deck uses an updated fan curve because a lot of people found that the Steam Deck fan was noisy. So they pushed out an update to reduce the noise by reducing the fan speed at certain temperatures. For a game like Path of Exile, which is constantly pushing the Steam Deck to 100%, I found with this default updated fan curve, I can feel a bit of heat in the right grip of the Steam Deck and my hand can get a bit sweaty and I really don't like this. Furthermore, I'm not bothered at all by a bit of fan noise. I'm usually wearing headphones or I like the white noise anyways. So I greatly prefer the original fan curve. And fortunately, Valve gives you a setting in order to use that fan curve instead of the new default one. So if you also would greatly prefer to have the deck be cool at the cost of a bit of fan noise, the way you can change that setting is by going into settings, uh, then you go into system, and if you scroll down all the way, really far, you can see a setting for enable updated fan control. If you want the original fan curve, you just disable this setting, and it'll feel a bit noisier with the fan running a bit faster, but you should feel absolutely no heat whatsoever in the grips, and I find that that's a much better experience overall. So next up is once you get in game, you're going to notice something you're going to notice that it has automatically mapped your skills uh, from your PC controls onto controller buttons. Now, the way this works is it's completely automatic. The left mouse button will be mapped to the A button, and from there, each single slot on PC will be mapped to a specific combination, either A, X, Y, or B, or right trigger A, X, Y, B, or left trigger A, X, Y, B. You cannot change which slots are mapped to which buttons on the controller. So my recommendation is that you figure out which slots feel good on a controller, put them there on your PC setup, and then simply change your key bindings on PC to match so that it feels good on both. Because the last thing you wanna do is every time you switch between playing on your desktop and playing on the Steam Deck, having to rebind all your skills. I did that for a bit, it really feels awful. Just adjust on desktop so that it feels good on controller as well. So if you don't like some of the keybinds, you might go, oh, I should rebind them. What, what are my options for rebinding keybinds? And unfortunately, the answer is none. Uh, controls for the controller controls cannot be rebound currently. GGG does not have support for that, which is quite a pain. Uh, hopefully this is something they will add in the future. However, for now, you can mess around with Steam input to do a couple things. And that's something I'll cover more in a future video. Uh, but for now, you're kind of stuck with just the default controls. Next up is loot filters. So you're probably wondering, how do I get my loot filter working on the Steam Deck? I don't want to see every piece of loot that drops. So there are two ways you can go about this. First of all is if you use Filter Blade, you can just automatically sync it through the Filter Blade website. What this will do is it will automatically have your filter show up in game. Now, this is the approach that I strongly recommend. The reason for this is that you're probably gonna change your loot filter all the time. And when you pick up your Steam Deck, you don't wanna have an out of date loot filter on your Steam Deck that you then have to manually update. If you use Filter Blade, it will just automatically update your filter 
to whatever you're using on desktop through Filter Blade through the sync on your Path of Excel account. So your, your Steam Deck will always be kept in sync with the loot filter you're using on your desktop PC. So this is a great way to do it. You can just see all the sync loot filters you have through Filter Blade here and select them and that will work just fine. However, it is possible to manually uh, download a filter file, put it in the correct location and use it on the Steam Deck. And some users, perhaps you have your own customized loot filter uh, that you've made yourself and you wanna use, some people might wanna do that. So for, for those people, I'm going to show you how you do that on the Steam Deck real quick. So you cannot do it in game, you have to back out. And in fact, you can't even do it in gaming mode. In order to change your loot filter, you have to switch to desktop mode. Uh, this lets you use your uh, Steam Deck like it was a desktop PC. So we'll switch to desktop mode and I'll show you what we do from there. So this is what it looks like when you boot it up into desktop mode. This is just a Linux desktop. It probably looks very similar to Windows and it is. So in order to navigate here, you can use the right touchpad to control the cursor. Pushing in the right touchpad will uh, left click and pushing in the left touchpad will right click. So in order to do this, you have to find the folder where you're supposed to put your filter files. It is stored in a very unintuitive place. I have this uh, a shortcut to a very important folder. You have to find where Steam is, which is here. Home deck slash dot local slash share slash Steam. Once in the Steam folder, you have to find the Steam apps folder. And then in here, you have to find compat data. So this folder contains the compatibility data that Steam generates in order to run Windows games under Linux. Now each folder here just looks like a bunch of gibberish numbers. However, these numbers actually correlate to the internal Steam ID of games on Steam. So if you go to, we can look up real quick what the, that ID is for Path of Exile. So if I go type Steam DB Path of Exile, Path of Exile's app ID is 238960. So if you look right here, we can see we have 238960. So this is the compat data folder for Path of Exile. And then you'll see a bunch of weird things here, but click this folder, PFX, and then drive C. What you'll notice now is this is a dummy Windows directory that Steam automatically sets up for any game that needs to think it's running under Windows. Once you reach this point, you just have to find the normal folder under Windows where you put your filters, which is users, Steam user, uh, documents, my games. Oh, hey, look, look what we have here, Path of Exile. And here we go. So this is the folder where you would put any .filter files. You can also see it has the folder for the online filters that it is automatically synced. Uh, but this is where you have to put it. I'm gonna recommend that you bookmark either the Steam folder or the Compat data folder because in the future, you'll probably have games that you need to go in and mess around with settings for, maybe modify a settings file or download things like loot filters and having that bookmarked will help you out immensely. Once you've done this, you're good. All you have to do is close this and boot back into gaming mode, which you can find a button here, return to gaming mode. By default, it's in the top left. I've changed my desktop a little bit. Once you've booted back into gaming mode, all you have to do is start Path of Exile back up. And when you go to the filter list, you should find your loot filter right there in the list. So next up is there are some key binds that are a bit unintuitive that are very important to having a good experience on the Steam Deck. First of all is how do you bring up the chat window? People are gonna whisper you, they're gonna wanna buy items when you're playing on the Steam Deck. It might be a high ticket item, you wanna sell it. How do you, how do you invite that person? So the key bind for bringing up the chat window is L3, which is holding down the left stick button. So when you click it in, and then while you're holding down L3, you push the start button. That's the one with the three lines next to the AXYB buttons. Now of note, if you hold down start and then push L3, it will not work. You have to hold down L3 and then while holding down L3, hit start. This will bring up the chat window and you can use left stick to, to move around. In order to select someone that messaged you, you then select the main window itself here and hit A. This will let you scroll up through the messages. You can scroll up and down. No one's messaging me right now, so nothing's happening. And when you find the person that messaged you, you hit A on them, it'll bring up a little window and you can click invite to invite them to your party. In order to back out of here, 
Just hit B to back out, scroll to the bottom and hit B again in order to back out of the chat window. Ah, someone messaged me. Okay, so let me show you. So you do, you hold the left stick and then start in order to bring up the menu and then scroll up and select the person to invite. So this person wants 40 orbs of regret for 45 chaos. So let me get those here. And there we go. So if they do that, you should start in order to prompt the trade and that's it. And that's how you trade. So if you wanna remove someone from your party or actually invite the trade yourself, you just hit start and go over here and you can either trade with them or kick them from party like this. That was a good demo of trading. I'm glad that guy whispered when you did. Now, another key bind that is super important, super, super important, is toggling the visibility of names and items on the ground. So if you've played on PC for a long time, you might know that sometimes when you get tons of loot on screen, the locations of where the name for the pieces of loot show up can become mismatched with where they actually are on the ground. Most of the time, this isn't a huge problem because when you click on the name, your character runs to where that the piece of loot is anyways. With a controller, this is not how it works. When you hit A on a piece of loot to pick it up, your character will not move. Your character only moves when you move left stick. What this means is if the piece of loot is too far away for you to pick up, when, you, when you're close enough to get the A button prompt, it can become impossible to pick up a piece of loot. The way to fix this is if you toggle names off and on, it will reset the names to the pieces of loot to where the pieces of loot actually are, and this will enable you to pick them up. So the way you do this on a controller is you hold down right trigger, and then while you're holding it down, you push down on the D-pad. This will toggle them off, and if you do it again, it'll toggle them back on. So if you're in a map, you're having trouble picking up a piece of loot, just hold down the right trigger and Real quick, double tap bottom on the D-pad and that'll fix the issue for you. Now in regards to trading, something else you might wanna do is you might wanna let people know you're playing on a Steam Deck because you might be a bit slower in trading, you might fumble around the UI a little bit. So what I like to do is when I first started playing on the Steam Deck is I'll set up an auto reply. So I'll go slash uh, auto reply. I'll say something like playing on Steam Deck, trades may, may be slow. Uh, something like this can be useful because then people will message you and they'll know to give you, you know, a minute or two to get the trade in order if you have to find something. It can be because it can be a bit slower than on desktop and you don't want people standing around getting angry messaging you being like, why is it taking you 30 seconds to find the item? Uh, you don't want that. So just set up an auto reply or if you just want to turn out some maps without worrying about trading, just set up slash DND and, you know, do those maps and you can trade when, next time you play on your desktop. Now my recommendation would be if you want to do something like rolling maps that you do it on your PC ahead of time. However, you might find yourself in a situation where you need to do something like rolling maps. You're just out, or you just want to roll a single map. So let me show you some tips for getting around your inventory. So first of all, you might find it's very slow to use the left stick or D-pad to move around one tile at a time if you want to, you know, get that ID scroll on the lower right or something. Well, a, a quick tip for you is if you use the right stick, it will jump to the direction that you hold. So if you're up here and you wanna get that ID scroll, just go down and right, and there you are at the ID scroll. Now, another tip is, as you can notice, here in the top left, I keep my portal scrolls. This is where I would recommend you keep your portal scrolls when you're playing on the Steam Deck, because when you open the inventory, it defaults to this spot. So if you're in a map, you can open up here. I'll just go to a zone real quick and show you why this is great. So you want to return real quick, all you do is you open the inventory and hit A and you're good. And you're back in your map. It lets you use portal scrolls really quick in a way that honestly kind of feels better than on PC. You just hit start and A and your portal's up. Uh, I can actually portal out of maps faster with a controller now than I can on PC, which is kind of wild. So I'd recommend you keep your portal scrolls in the top right just like that. So another thing that's important to learn is how you use currency multiple times on a controller. Uh, this, is especially, this is especially important with sextants because you don't want to be hitting A, finding the sextant, using it, you know, open the UI each time. It'll be a huge pain. So the way, you, the way you do this on PC is you hold down shift and then while you keep left clicking, while you hold down shift, it will use that currency again and again. The equivalent of that on a controller is X. So what you do is you first hit A to select the currency you're going to use. And then you hit, when you go to apply it, you hit X instead of A. This will keep it on the cursor so you can use it again. So you can go up, right, and down. 
you can use this to apply your sextants really quick, which you're gonna be doing if you're running maps on the Steam Deck. Uh, and it's also convenient if you have to roll maps. So one more trick is the map device. So this can look a bit intimidating when you first pull it up on the Steam Deck. Uh, the way it works though is the right stick lets you select your map device modifier. So you just scroll up and down to find the one you want. The triggers let you select between the various master missions. And if you hold down L3 and use the triggers, that lets you select between the three influence types. This is a bit clunky, but you're not changing influence types very often anyways, so this is totally fine. Of note though, is that the influence types and the map device mods, at least as of 3.19, uh, the game remembers the last one you selected and will keep selecting it for future maps, which is very helpful. However, this memory where it has, where it remembers the last thing you've selected is stored locally on your device. So if you're playing on your desktop and then you open up the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck won't remember the settings for the last map that you actually ran on your desktop. It will remember the last settings for the map that you ran last on your Steam Deck. So a lot of times I've messed this up where I've switched which, you know, influence I was running and now I'm, I put in an Elder Guardian map and I open it up, but instead of selecting the Maven, it selects Eater of Worlds or something because that's the last map I was doing. So just make sure you don't fall for that. Make sure you check the influence device and change it the first time you start to do a map on the Steam Deck uh, to make sure you're doing the right thing because it will not remember whatever you just did on your desktop computer. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it helps you hit the ground running with Path of Exile on the Steam Deck. I intend to make a lot more Path of Exile Steam Deck videos in the future, including things like battery life and how you can use Steam input to customize your controls and have a better experience. So if you're interested in seeing those videos, you should subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss them. If you want to support the channel, you should drop me a like and leave a comment with any questions you have, comments, or things you want to see in future videos. Your comments have been incredibly helpful in helping me figure out what videos I should make in the future. So please, please, please leave a comment if there's something you want to see more of. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.